Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode we are adding the North Sulawesi Babirusas to the Elm Hill City Zoo. That's the second animal from the new Southeast Asia animal pack that we are adding to our zoo. In the last episode we added the Binturongs to the zoo. You guys really seem to like the Binturong enclosure, judging by all the positive comments and all the response to that video. So in case anyone didn't see it, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. And also thank you for all those positive comments and likes. And I would like to give a warm welcome to all the new subscribers. Hello guys and welcome to the family. I am super amazed by how quickly this channel grows. I mean, by the time I am recording this voiceover, we have nearly 600 subscribers. So thank you. I am super grateful for each and every one of you. And this is only a beginning. So many new videos are to come and I hope you guys will enjoy them. As I said, in today's video, we are adding the Babirusas to the zoo. This animal is actually one of my favorites from the new animal pack. Because it's simply very very unique and I think that the model of this animal looks very very nice. I actually saw the Babirusas in the Berlin Zoo and I remember how amazed I was by its appearance. I mean mainly by the male appearance because it has those very characteristic tusks. And I was super happy when I found out that they'll be added to the planet zoo. This habitat will be another habitat in our zoo that will be a bit lower into the ground. I mean that the path for guests is actually a bit higher than actual habitat. So the guests get the perfect viewing for an entire enclosure. We did similar thing for llamas and for binturongs last time. And now I wanted to repeat that because I was actually inspired by the Babirusa habitat in Singapore Zoo. And this habitat is also a bit lower so that the guests are actually above the animals. I actually learned a new trick recently and I used it at the beginning of this video. If you watched my previous video with Benturongs, you probably remember when I had some issues with uh, the path being really close to this lowered habitat. I mean, when you, when you try to change or manipulate the terrain near the path, I'm sure all of you know what happens. Uh, it's quite difficult to do because there is this piece of terrain around the path that you just cannot you know change it will always stay there and you know creating those ditches near the paths was always hard for me because I had to cover uh, those parts of terrain that were very close to the path but then I figure out that if I want to do such things I need to first you know uh, dig up the terrain I mean make this habitat and then elevate the path just a little like slightly so that it is basically at the ground level and then I can just put the path like slightly over this uh, lower terrain so that it basically creates a viewing terrace or viewing platform but it looks like a normal path and this basically solved my issue that I had. So building those kinds of habitats in the future will be much more easier for me. I play Planet Zoo for over one and a half year and as you can see I can still learn something new. So if you want to build something similar this trick is worth to remember because it really makes your life easier. As you could see, I created this uh, fence for guests from the temple pieces that we got with the South America pack and the rusted fences uh, from the Australia pack and I really like how it turned out. Right now I started to work on the habitats barrier for the animals. I wanted to created from the aquatic rocks that we got with an aquatic pack. 
As I told you, I was inspired by the Babirusa habitat in Singapore Zoo. When I was looking for inspiration for this habitat, I came through many Babirusa habitats and they all were a bit plain, you know, there are pigs, so there's a lot of mud, there are not a lot of plants because they would simply eat everything. Basically, their habitats aren't too exciting. It's just mud, dirt, some, you know, enrichment, some logs or something like this and a shelter. But this habitat that I found was actually a bit more interesting. That's why I wanted to maybe not recreate it, but do something similar. In a Singapore zoo, they also used a lot of fake rocks. The habitat boundaries are made of them and also there are some piles or maybe islands of those rocks in the middle of this habitat and they are basically planters for plants. I mean the plants grow on the top of those rocks, uh, they act just like giant pots for plants so that the animals actually cannot access them, they cannot eat them and thanks to this, this habitat looks very lush and green and no plants are actually at the animal level. Thanks to this, this habitat gets this really tropical feeling and it is still very muddy, there is a lot of dirt, some mud baths for animals, there is this swimming area with water for them and this is something that I was going for. I will put the link down in the description of this video to the photos of this habitat in case you guys want to see what I am talking about right now and maybe get inspired yourself to build something similar. Of course the Singapore Zoo is in completely different biome, in more tropical one, so the plants are totally different. There are a lot of tropical rainforest plants and here we are building in temperate biome. So I adjusted the plants to the temperate biome and you will see plants that are more suitable for our zoo. So yeah, I had to do some adjustments for our habitat, but I love how it turned out. You will be able to see it in the later stage of this video. As you can see, I already started to work on a shelter for animals. This shelter wasn't inspired by anything. It is 100% my creation. I knew that I wanted to use those small planks because I've built something very similar in, in one of my other zoos some time ago when I wasn't recording those videos yet and I wanted to use it again because I really liked it before. If you use a lot of those uh, planks that you can recolor and you put them next to each other, I would recommend to play a bit with their colors just as I did here. I mean not to make them all in the same color, just choose some individual planks and change their colors very slightly. Thanks to this you get more texture and it looks much more realistic. Because there are basically not two planks in the same color. Planks that are made from trees of the same kind like oak or something like this. They can have entirely different shade. And that's something that is nice to remember if you want your buildings to look a bit more realistic. I think that it is actually the first time that I use the Asia rock columns. I think that those pieces are called like this or something similar. I never used them before in my builds, but I like stumbled upon them accidentally and I think that they look very very nice. Especially for a build like this, when I was going for a building that was a bit older, you know, and it is in this older part of the zoo. Yeah, and I'm so happy that I found those pieces because I think that thanks to them this building looks very, very nice. I will be also using them in this habitat as an edge for water area. I mean, I wanted the babirusas to use the stairs to go to the water, so I wanted to make the edge a bit higher. You will also be able to see it later. 
and I really like how how this also looks at the end because in the Singapore Zoo there is also this uh, edge for animals and I wanted to recreate it a bit. Okay, and while I am creating this shelter, I think that it is perfect time for our fun facts! In all of my videos, I try to give you guys some fun facts about the animals that we are currently adding to the zoo. So today's fun facts are about babirusas. Babirusas are native to the Indonesian islands of Sulawesi, Tokyan, Sula and Buru. Babirusas are excellent swimmers and it is believed that they swam from island of Sulawesi to the Sula and Buru islands and that's how they were introduced to those two islands. And this is also why I wanted to give them some swimming space in this habitat. Babirusas are very unique pigs. Uh, they are wild members of pig family, but they differ from other pigs in several ways. Their snouts are not as specialized as those of other pigs. Babirusas also have complex two-chambered stomachs, which are more reminiscent of digestive systems of sheep, and that's why scientists think that Babirusas branched off from the rest of the pig family early in its evolution. Babirusa means pig deer in the Malay language. It is believed that the Sulawesi people gave the Babirusa its uh, name because of their large tusks that reminded them of the antlers. Babirusas are omnivorous and their diet includes leaves, fruits, berries, nuts, mushrooms, bark, insects, fish and small mammals. They use their hooves to dig for roots and insects in the ground and are also able to support themselves on their two back feet to stand up and feed on higher leaves. While most piglets are striped at birth and dependent on their mothers for a long time, Babirusa young lack stripes and develop quickly. They typically wander from their nests and begin looking for food by 10 days old. Babirusa litter sizes are also small for pigs, usually only 1 to 3 piglets are in a litter. Babirusas do very well in captivity. In the wild they usually live up to 10 years, but in several zoos they made it past 20 years old. And they also breed very well in zoos. The North Sulawesi Babirusa is most famous for its amazing tusks, which only the males possesses. Male Babirusa canine teeth continue to grow throughout its life. The lower canine teeth are long and overlap the edge of Babirusa's snout as they grow. Its upper canines start out growing downward, but then rotate and begin to grow up into the top of the snout, penetrating the skin and curving butt back towards the animal's forehead. The tusks can actually reach 17 inches and can actually grow back into the skull. The purpose of those tusks is actually a misery, something that the males use their tusks during fights over females. It seems reasonable until you look at how babirusas really fight. They stand up on their hind legs and box each other with their front hooves. Additionally, the tusks aren't built to withstand such pressure and they are very easily broken. It seems like the tusks serve as a display purpose, perhaps showing the genetic fitness to females. But this is the an idea that hasn't been tested yet. For now, the purpose of those marvelous tasks is still a mystery. Okay, but let's go back to today's video. As you can see, I already started to work on an interior of this shelter. I cut out some of the footage of me adding plaster pieces to create uh, walls in the interior of this uh, shelter. But I'm sure that you guys will know how I did it. It was just aligning to the surface and adding those pieces so that the walls and the ceiling are completely covered with plaster pieces. I also added two windows for some natural lighting. 
The interior of this shelter is a bit big for three babirusas that we are going to add. I actually thought that those animals are much bigger and when I added the first one to this habitat I was actually surprised how small it is. But this shelter was already built by then and I didn't want to make it any smaller because it was simply too late. Speaking by changes, you guys also could see me changing some pillars, I mean those wooden pillars outside of the building. I wasn't just, you know, convinced on how those looked and I chose to change them to uh, pillars in the same color as the planks that we have on the outside of this building and I think that I made the right choice because to me it looks much more natural like some building you should actually be able to see in real life. So yeah, sometimes a little change can make a very big difference. The interior of this building, I mean the stalls, were actually a bit inspired by my visits to the countryside when I was a little kid. I have family on the countryside that has a lot of pigs. So they have those pig pens and the pigs live in those stalls inside the huge barn. And I remember that those stalls were mostly made out of wood. There are a lot of hay beddings for pigs, there was food trough and those gates that were opening outside. So this is something that I wanted to recreate. Some of you suggested under my last uh, video with Binturongs that I should uh, show you guys where exactly we are building in the zoo so you get the perspective. So if you want to see it, there will be one of the shots in the cinematic shots by the end of this video from above. You'll be able to see where this habitat is actually located. Also, you guys really liked my custom billboards in the last video. So thank you for that because it was my first attempt to make one and I am super glad that you like them. I also created three custom billboards for this habitat. You will be able to see them in the cinematic shots. So if you are interested and you want to get some inspiration for your custom billboards, stay till the end of this video, because I will show you mine in those cinematic shots. Also, some of you guys uh, asked about the Discord server. So yeah, the Discord server is actually in my plans. I would like to keep in touch with you guys even more. I would like to have a place where you can write messages to me, where we can all talk, where, we, where you can give me some suggestions about the videos. I promise I will create a Discord server for you guys. But please give me some time because I have a lot of work right now and not too many free time and I want to sit and do it right. So I promise it is coming, but please be patient and forgive me that it is taking so long. If you have any more suggestions or you simply want to tell me something, please comment down below. I try to reply to every comment so it won't be unnoticed for sure and I would really love to hear your guys opinion because thanks to this I can learn what you guys actually like and want to see more and what doesn't work so I can know what to record for my future videos. Also I included a photo of me at the end of this video, I mean on the end screen, so you guys actually know who is talking to you right now and who is uh, recording those videos for you. So if you want to see how I actually look like, uh, please stay till the end of this video and there will be my photo there. Let's go back to the day's habitat. After I will be finished with this shelter, I will obviously start to work on the outside part of this habitat. As I said, it will be very muddy, there will be a lot of dirt, because those pigs seem to really like this kind of environment and I wanted to give them that. And also, as I said, because no plants will actually be able to 
probably survive with those pigs in one habitat. I actually put some little plants in there, but th those are basically nettles and so on, so I hope that those pigs won't eat them, but there are very very few of them in this habitat. As I said, more of the plants will be above, in those up planters that they won't have any access to, but you will be able to see it in a second. Also, with a new update, we are now able to change the color of the water. And for this habitat, I changed the color of the water to look like greenish, you know, a bit dirty. I mean, it's not dirty, stinky and so on. It's just, you know, those pigs, they spend a lot of time in mud, in dirt, and they then come and jump into the water, so it gets a bit muddy, a bit dirty, and I'm sure that it would be extremely hard uh, for zoo stuff to keep it very like clear. So again, I'm trying to build some realistic stuff, and I think that in Babirusa habitat, the water wouldn't be like 100% clear, and this is what I went for. I'm sure that if you ever been to a zoo, you saw that some of those water areas are, are not clear. They have this greenish browny tint or color. Only uh, water areas for animals like seals, penguins, when you have those underwater viewing galleries are actually super clear. And unless it isn't like a river or a lake running through the habitat, the human-made water features are actually getting a bit dirty over time. And I wanted to recreate that. By the end, uh, I also added some you know, fake filtration for this uh, water, just to add again a bit of realism. As you can see, I uh, already started to work on the outside part of this habitat again. I added this forage box for animals and the mud bath. The forage box is also something that the Babirusa have in Singapore Zoo, which this habitat is inspired by. They have this area with a lot of tree bark. And I'm sure that the zookeepers hide food for them so that they are enriched by looking for it, just as we have it in Planet Zoo. By the way, the animation for Babirusa while it's eating from this forage box are very nice. I included it also in the cinematic shots by the end of this video, so you will be able to see it, how they do it. And I think that it is very important to keep those animals enriched and pigs, babirusas, warthogs, they spend a lot of time digging in ground with their noses or hooves, they look for food. This is very natural behavior for them, so trying to recreate that in the zoo is very important and I'm glad that we have enrichment items like this in this game. Also, I added a mud bath because those animals spend a lot of time in the mud. They protect their, their skin against insects and against hot sun by, you know, bathing in the mud. And I also really like how they look when they are dirty after going in there. Thanks to this, they look even better, even though I love the model or already, but when they are so dirty, they look even more realistic, because those animals would for sure be dirty if they are not right away after the bath in the, you know, water area. So I actually also wanted to include a dirty one in the thumbnail for this video, because as I said, I simply think that it looks even better like this. This habitat will also include a holding pen for babirusas. I try to add holding pens to all of my uh, habitats. 
because it is a very useful thing. It is used to separate the animals when one is, for example, sick or there are some conflicts within the herd. If the mother just gave birth to a child, they can be separated and rest for a bit. Or if there's a new animal that has just arrived to the zoo and it needs some time to acclimate, it is also put in there. So I made it for Babirusas as well. They have a little shelter in there, uh, some enrichment and a bowl. You will be able to see me creating that in a second. At first, I thought about using only those fake aquatic rocks in the outside part of this habitat. But then I realized that the color of those rocks that I used blends really well together with tropical rocks. And also tropical rocks blend really well together with uh, dirt texture that we have in the temperate biome. So combining those three textures, I mean the tropical rocks, the aquatic rocks and the dirt looks very very cool. And I didn't expect that those two kinds of those rocks will be able to blend together so nicely. So yeah, there will be a lot of footage of me adding rocks to this habitat right now. I simply love rocks in this game and I think that they make the habitats look so much better so much realistic and without rocks I think that we just wouldn't be able to create something like this. Also because this water isn't like 100% clear and visible I wanted to add some you know like algae or underwater plants that will grow out of this uh, water so uh, I think that the moss that we have in the game, it looks very convincing as an algae. So I use it a lot of the bottom of this water feature and on the walls as it, it's like, you know, grows out of the water. And I think that it also like added a lot of realism to this build. I didn't include all the work I did around this habitat this time because I didn't want to make this video too long for you guys. It is a bit longer anyway. So if you want to see me how I decorated the area around the habitat, stay till the end because I will show you everything in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. Okay, and this is all that I have for you today, guys. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build and as I said, please stay till the end of this video because there will be some cinematic shots of the entire habitat and the area around it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see me build more of those realistic habitats. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Comment down below if you liked my video or if you have any recommendations on how I can improve my future videos. I am still new to this YouTube world and every recommendation is very valid for me. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!